Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Paul, an international medical graduate. In this video, we will continue our discussion on high yield topics of ethics. In my previous video, I discussed about these topics. If you haven't seen my first video on ethics yet, please check the link in the description below. A quick disclaimer, this video is made completely based on what and how I studied for my exam. For details, please visit CPSO website. Before starting, please subscribe and like the video if you find it helpful. Let's start off. Mandatory reports and consent to treatment. I can't emphasize how important those are for MCCQ1 exam and mandatory reporting is also very important for our clinical decision making that is CDM part. I will also discuss here how MCC can incorporate CDM question with ethics. In my previous video, there was a case scenario where the diagnosis was gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is a notifiable infectious disease, so we do need to notify to public health authorities. In MCQ, you can get question like, what is the specific treatment of gonorrhea? Or in CDM, you can get like three, four options. So we need to include all the options like specific treatment, notify to public health department, treatment of partners, maybe even look for other sexually transmitted disease in the same patient. So most of the cases what happens like we forget to include notification to respected department. So we have to be very careful about that. So there is a long list of mandatory reports. Please visit website, link is in the description box. Now flash quiz. You are working in emergency department of local hospital, a patient presents to you with gunshot in his upper abdomen with features of shock. From this scenario, we can make questions for MCQ as well as CDM. For MCQ, what is the best next step of management? For CDM, how will you manage this patient? Which includes investigation and treatment. So comment down below, what do you think? Now consent to treatment. Physicians have a legal and professional obligation to obtain consent prior to providing treatment and that consent should be valid, though there are exceptions that I will talk later. So what elements are required for consent to be valid? Be obtained from the patient if they are capable or from the incapable patient's SDM. Consent must be related to treatment, must be informed given voluntarily and also must not to be obtained through mispresentation or fraud. A bit details about elements of valid consent. Consent must relate to the treatment. What does that mean? That means it must relate to the specific treatment being proposed and provided. After taking the consent, if there is no significant difference or adjustments to that treatment, Physicians are entitled to presume that there is consent to the treatment. It must be informed. Physicians must provide information about the nature of the treatment, its expected benefits, material risk and side effects, alternative courses of action, and also the likely consequence of not having the treatment. Consent must be given voluntarily without any pressure of any kind. Physicians must be frank and honest when interacting with patients, including when conveying the information about the proposed treatment without any misrepresentation. A case scenario. Say you are working in cardiac care unit and a patient presents within an hour of acute MI. You have all the facilities including interventions. The patient is capable and you have the opportunity to take the consent from that patient. You inform the patient about the intervention that is angioplasty and the benefits of angioplasty like it would prolong the life, best treatment, good for your heart. As part of consent, you also mentioned about risk like excessive bleeding due to rupture of the coronary vessels or femoral vessels that can even lead to death. After that, the patient decided not to do the angioplasty due to fear of the death from bleeding and decided to take medical treatment as alternative course. On very next day, the patient died. Do you think the way the consent was taken was valid? Let's check it out. 
According to the elements of valid consent, in this case, the consent was taken from the capable patient. It was relayed to the treatment. It was informed. The patient gave the consent voluntarily and the consent was not taken through mispresentation. It sounds like the consent was valid, but that's not true. Let's check why. While the patient was informed, he was informed about nature of treatment, expected benefits, material risk and side effects, alternative course of action like medical treatment, but not about consequence of not having the standard treatment, which misguided the patient. So in this case, it was not valid. Now, how consent can be given? Healthcare Consent Act states that consent to treatment may be expressed or implied. Express consent is direct, explicit, and unequivocal, and can be given either orally or in writing. Implied consent is inferred from the words or behavior of the patient or surrounding circumstances, like a patient present to you for vaccination and forward open arms to you. It means he or she is giving you the consent to do that. But when it carries appreciable risk, invasive and surgical procedures, college requires physicians to document in the patient's record information. Patients and SDM can refuse or withhold consent to a treatment. Even consent can be withdrawn at any time after giving the consent. Physicians also need to respect the patient's or SDM decision even if the patient does not agree with the decision. In emergencies, physicians must obtain consent from a patient who is apparently capable with respect to the treatment or from the incapable patient's SDM. As I said earlier, there is exception to consent and this is in case of emergency. If the physician thinks the delay required to obtain a consent or refusal on behalf of the patient's SDM will prolong the suffering and will put the patient at risk of sustaining serious bodily harm, the physician can start treatment. If consent is refused by a SDM in an emergency, the treatment may still be administered despite the refusal if the physician thinks the SDM has not complied with the requirements for SDM outlined in Healthcare Consent Act and also must promptly note this condition to the patient's record. But also, physicians must not provide treatment in emergencies if they have reasonable grounds to believe that the patient, while capable and at least 16 years of age, has expressed a wish applicable to the circumstances to refuse consent to the treatment. A little about consent for minors. The test of capacity to consent to a treatment is not age dependent and physicians must make a determination of capacity to consent to a treatment for a minor just as they would for an adult. The physician must obtain consent from the minor directly even if the minor is accompanied by his or her parent or guardian. There is an exception in Quebec where the age of consent is 14 years or older. Flash quiz. You are a fourth year medical student on clinical rotation in cardiac care unit. A 60 years old male admitted to the hospital last night with dyspnea and the diagnosis was pericardial effusion. He would undergo pericardial synthesis and your supervisor told you to take the consent. You read the procedure last week in book, but uncertain about the risk. What should you do? Think about it and comment down below. In my next video, I will continue from here and will discuss about two more high yield topics. Till then, stay connected. To get videos like this, please like, share, comment, subscribe and turn on notification bell. I really appreciate your feedback. Thanks for watching.